you know, you want to keep. It, but I'm allergic to it. You want to keep, you know, the aromatherapy works. Yeah. So yeah. I decided to put instead of incense to put a. Uh, you know, it just throws vapor with the yeah. water vapor with the you know with the with the with, <laughs> with essential oils exactly. It's, it's essential oils. <laughs> hey. As we were once said on the book club. So <laughs> we are here. We are ready to start. Yes. So we we'll start with a few minutes meditation. Okay. Yes.
Now, you know the meaning of the Gayatri Mantra? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, all teachers are taught the meaning of the Gayatri Mantra and, I, and are taught how to say the Gayatri Mantra. Om. Om represents, is like the mantra of the Godhead. You know, is like the energy or the vibration <coughs> from which everything arose. Um, did I speak about Carl Sagan this morning and the or that was another day, probably was another day. Yeah. Energy, vibration and what else did you say? I, I will oh, explain okay. it now, don't worry. <coughs> so Om represents the divine, let's say. You know it's it's not a word, it's the energy, it represents the energy of the divine. So Om is that energy or the divine and then Bur Bhuva Swaha. Bur, let the energy of the divine uh, feel my emotions, for example, that could be a translation. Let the energy of the divine feel the feelings of my heart. Let the energy of the divine inspire my talking, because Vishuddha is where you talk. Reality is not the mouth, it's this, the larynx, so it's where the language comes from. So, Om, Bur, Bhuva, Swaha. Tatsavitur Varenyam. From that energy, oh, everything came about. So, from that Om, everything came about. Tatsavitur Varenyam. Bargo. Devashya Dihimahi. You that are the purest, Bargo is pure, referring to Om. You, that energy that is the purest, Bargo, Devashya Dihimahi is the only God in which we meditate. Devashya Dihimahi is the only God in which, Deva is God, is the only God in which meditate. Di yoyo naha prashodayat. Lead our intellect in the right direction. And then Om is Om again, the divine energy. Shanti is peace. So Om, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti is. May the past, the peace of that divine energy be with you or be with all of us or us. Om, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. So that is the meaning of the Gayatri Mantra which is a universal prayer, acceptable by anyone, you know, because... So, <clears throat> before I start, let me check that we have all the emails here from everybody. I didn't do mine. Oh, I didn't do mine either. Okay, so, uh, keep telling, tell, tell me, tell, tell them. My come on. Omni? Yeah. A? A? B like boy? B like boy? L? L? A? A. S like Sam. S like Sam. U. U. C. C. At gmail.com. So A Blazuk? Yeah. At gmail.com. I figure that's easier than the Anna Banana. But I don't know how I know all of the Anna Banana. You, you don't use banana? Though? I use both. Okay. My, Next my professional name. Marcia? Susie? Marcia? Oh, seven. That's my professional. Banana? Yeah, how you Marcia 0701. Next one. Anyone missing? I have. Yeah, exactly. Breathing and healing, Susie Swake, A.B., Ron Ingersing, Kirtan with Jane, right. mm -hmm. Beth Buchamp, John Berman Water, Maria De Angelis, Harry Stahl, Donna Durga, Ablasuk, uh, Anna Blasucci, Marcia, and mm -hmm. John, Luma Silva, and the Yeah. That's it? No, no one missing now? Everybody in? Uh, yeah, he, he just... Oh, yeah. Okay. 
so we have that so invite okay so you will receive an invitation from Google it will be an email that you will be receiving from Google telling you you are invited to join this class in Google classroom and you just say join if you don't get it in your normal uh, inbox. inbox look at the spam because you know as, as it is a Google mm -hmm. It yeah. could go to spam if you don't have that address in your... Roman, the classes that you're doing like today and this morning and this afternoon mm -hmm. and they'll be on the internet, will they disappear after a certain period of time? Or <coughs> no, no, this, everything I will be teaching you will be here in this platform where, where I have just invited you. What about this other one that we did? to get like the class to watch the classes live the classes live all the classes live from the teacher training cross course will be here okay. only here okay. Okay. so not in the general website okay so you need to know your google password right yeah you need a google account yeah. you will need a google account to get here okay if you don't if you have one you will use that one if you don't have one you open one Yes, okay. a Gmail account right. or okay. you can open a Google account with your email. You don't need to change the email, but right. Google obliges you to open a Google account. How do we get on the list for the 16 hour class? You go on to on what list? Slash meditation .com. Yeah. Well, he said it's going to be on this one too. All you're doing is just go into the podcast. <coughs> I already have you in the list. To get their classroom? Yeah. Okay. So that classroom won't disappear then? No, this classroom will not disappear. Oh, Nothing yeah. will disappear. Everything will stay there. Don't worry no, about that. No, eventually. You just have to go into the podcast. What time? Next, next, uh, next oh, yeah, 15, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will spend some time with the technology so that you <laughs> learn the few little things that you have to learn, which are not too much, you know. Mm -hmm. simple enough the few little things you have to learn to access all the information mm -hmm. but you will have all the information both the videos we are recording and uh, you know texts and the videos I use in the classes you will have all that in uh, here and, and I will teach you how to access to it in any case if you have any problems Try to try to join this afternoon. As soon as you get home, look for the email and join. Okay. Mm -hmm. So anyone that had have problems, tomorrow I can sort it okay. out. Okay. Will it say to you, uh, do you need to join, or are you? It, it will. You a, a, an email will arrive to you that yeah. will say, Ramon Leonardo has invited right. you, you to join the class, and the class is okay. named uh, AMS New York Chapter Teacher Training. Mm -hmm. Now, next week we won't be here in person. Will this class be? Yeah, it will. It will be recorded and then uh, included in this so Google Classroom. So it's not going to be streamed. It, no, I'm not streaming the teacher. I already got the yes. yours. Eh? Mm -hmm. I already got the invitation. Yeah, the invitation. You, if you look at it, you will all have it already. And if you just press join, you should be able to join quickly if you have a Gmail account. If you don't have a Gmail account, okay, it so might take you a, a, a few steps more, but okay. that's all. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, okay, so that's it. No, 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 you are not going to get it on stream because we are not streaming this. We are recording it and then I will upload it here. Okay, so nothing's on here now. Nothing on okay, it's on there now. Now it's empty. Okay. Uh, and then today we will put everything recorded today, we will put it there. Right here. Okay. Yeah, and I will put also, you know, th there's a lot of material that I'm going to put there. So right. you want to be there because you will have a lot of material mm -hmm. yeah. uh, about all these things. So while we were speaking about the process, the aims and objective of the preparatory course are the process which we've seen already of 
from responsibility to acceptance to devotion to always. Oh, well, it says delivery there, it's surrender. I mean, I translated this with uh, one of these automatic translations. <laughs> <laughs> so it says delivery but means surrender. <laughs> Entrega could be delivery also, you know. Entrega is surrender. You surrender, you. Uh, and so it says delivery, well. Which is also the, is the same word in Spanish. The UPS well. man surrendered the package. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, it's surrender a package. You know? So the same word in Spanish for delivery and surrender. I wish it was that easy. <laughs> so delivery means surrender. Now, another of the aim of the course is, of, of course, that the students learn how to do Tratak, learn how to do Pranayamas, learn how to do the preparatory mantras, and learn how to do Guru Shakti. Hmm? Okay, so those are the aims and objectives of the preparatory course. Now, what are the concepts that are important and that we are going to explain throughout the preparatory course? Evolution, the personal God and the impersonal God. One of the things that distinguishes us, for example, from uh, the mindfulness, MBSR approach, or the more university-like approaches, is that they are ashamed to use the word God. Mm -hmm. Well, we are not ashamed to use the word God. We just explain it the best we can, but we are not ashamed to use the word God. And we are going to explain the concept of the personal God and the impersonal God. What is the personal God? What is the impersonal God? And we are going to explain the concept of evolution. Uh, so probably I will stop there now and we are going because I don't need to explain you how you do Tratak, yeah. right? No. No. Or Pranayamas no. or the Prep Mantra or Guru Shakti. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will start with the next one. So, so I'm going to use the black one. One of these, yeah. 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 This is Beryl's. Uh, uh, yeah, this is, we got this on Amazon. It was like $270. Uh, $270. Yeah, this is ours. This is ours. This is ours. This is, yeah. Is, yeah. This yeah. Was, uh, uh, you mean he didn't bring it from Spain? <laughs> <laughs> well, now you have, it really breaks down nicely. You have a projector <laughs> also. You have the chairs. Yeah. You have the lightning, because you know in the evenings you need that. To, to broadcast, so you have the lightning, so all these things, you have this thing, I'm not going to take this to, you know, the aromate, Ooh, so you nice. have that. Where is that from? That's from aromate. Amazon, everything is from Amazon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so all these things, you know, are part of what we are putting together for the future. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, let's uh, 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 explain a little bit the concept of the impersonal God and the personal God to begin with, okay? Now, the, the Eastern philosophies, um, <coughs> they don't have the concept uh, that we have associated with God as a creator. So, God as an entity of some description that's somewhere in some place and, you know, says, let, let, let me create a universe, which is the general uh, approach that we have received uh, in Christian Jewish cultures, which is the God as a creator, which is personal because it, it requires the will of creating uh, something. So it's like there is the will of some entity that says, I'm going to create this. Now, the Hindu philosophy and the philosophy that Guruji taught 
doesn't speak about that creator. It speaks about the manifesto. And uh, in the words of Guru Raj, it is, a mani it is the nature of the manifesto to manifest, like is the nature of fire to give off heat, or is the nature of a flower to give off fragrance, mm -hmm. which at the end of the day is like saying, um, it's a natural process. It's, it, there is no will involved, okay? So the personal God means that if there is a manifest the impersonal God means that if there is a manifest a manifestor, there is a manifestation. Because the nature of the manifestor is to manifest. And we call manifestation to this universe of ours where we are living. Now, <coughs> Uh, in order to understand this and relate it to your own experience and make it meaningful to your own experience, um, you have to do the following thing. I use the example of the string, I think, that in November when I was here I introduced it a little bit, but I will introduce it again, which is Every, every culture have asked this question to themselves, which is, the question is, where do I come from? You know, and normally people say, well, I come from my parents, and my parents came from their parents, and their parents came from, and then, you know, different cultures, if you ask to a... Uh, a person in the Amazonas, for example, in Brazil, they will tell you, and the first fathers were living in a tortoise, and you know, they find, you know, if you ask to an uh, evangelic Christian, for sure, he will tell you, and if you pull the string, you arrive to Adam and Eve, and different people tell you that you arrive to different places. But what we teach is something that is in accordance to what is generally accepted. So, if you pull off that string, and this is important because this has to do also with the concept of the mind. The mind, as you have heard in many satsangs, is the sum totality of all the experiences that you have had, you between quotations, we are not referring to the little eye, but the living entity has had to arrive where you are. So that's the mind, the sum totality of all previous experiences that have created information. Each experience created information. So one thing to visualize this and that you can see it in, in your mind is think about a string and you pull the string and you have your parents. You pull the string again and you have the parents of your parents and you pull the string again and you have the parents of the parents of your parents and you continue pulling the string. Where does that string end? Because there are always parents. Mm -hmm. You know, you cannot conceive you know, unless you get, you know, at the end of the string, a god taking two clay figures or one clay figure, and and then the rip. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this this is a joke that Guruji used to say, and that very people, very few people catch it. But I will tell you the joke. See if you can catch it. <laughs> so you know, Adam and Eve at the beginning. Uh, they were in the paradise. So Adam, you know, would go every morning being Adam and, you know, he would go out uh, to the fields and the places to find the food and bring, you know, all the things. And he would stay around or organizing a little bit the house and the home. And then Adam would come at the end of the day and he would tell him, Adam, you must be tired after all day, going here and there. Thank you very much for all the things you brought me. Let me make you a massage. But do you know what Eve was doing in reality? Counting his ribs. 
Just in case there was another aim. <laughs> Even then. <laughs> oh my god. Anyhow. <laughs> so, if you start pulling of this string, think about what you are doing. You are doing evolution backwards, right? So, you imagine, you know, and you have to also visualize how close is the relationship between your parents and you, because you learn a language, you incorporate uh, patterns of behavior, understandings, uh, you incorporate, you know, I mean, your whole psychology, as any psychology could bear me out, <coughs> is basically based on what you have inherited from, from your parents. So you inherit not only DNA information, you inherit psychic information in the form of language. Language is a way, you know, evolution <coughs> is the mechanism by which the experience is recorded and passed to the other generation. Somehow it's archived and passed to the other generation. If you think about, for example, the first cell, the first eukaryotic cell, uh, it was uh, confronted to, say, an acid environment, and this is a metaphorical way to speak, and the cell learned how to live in that environment and put that information in, in its DNA and pass this information to the next generation which was confronted to another experience, learned about it, put that information in the DNA and pass that information to the next generation and so on so forth, so on so forth till it arrives to you. DNA um, codifies 20-something amino acids. Who of you have studied some biology, at least in school, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you know the proteins are made out of amino acids and DNA, every three, you know, every three bases, it's like a code that this is this, is, this is whatever, the amino acid. And that codifies a protein and protein you know is of what bodies are put together so you could say that with 22 proteins with 22 amino acids you can build any body it's just a matter how they compose how you compose them like with 22 letters you can put together any book it's just a matter how you mix the letters so it's information codified information so human beings will receive codified information genetically, which is more dense, but we receive codified informationally, information linguistically, which is a much more subtle and uh, evolutive uh, information means. So think about that, you know, you receive all that information from your parents, that receive them from their parents, that receive them from their parents, that receive them from their parents, and start pulling the string and see how that information has been transferred through the ages. You need to go? You need to go? Soon. Soon. When is soon? Ten minutes. Ten minutes? Okay. Okay, thank you. So, <coughs> you visualize that? Are you visualizing the situation? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, <coughs> think about this string, no? That this string you know, you are here, I, and then, you know, obviously it has much more, much more spaces, but obviously this string finishes in the Big Bang. In other words, you know, if you pull that string, you will get to a point, you have it's very interesting to think about it because you have 250,000 years at minimum of direct family 
that are Homo sapiens sapiens, exactly as you. Because Homo sapiens sapiens have been in this planet for about 250,000 years. We know the history since minus 4,000 before Christ or minus 5,000, minus 6,000, we start to lose track and then we lose track. We know that human beings were around because there are bones, but that's all. And, and you know, you know, we have ideas of what they did because, but there's no written, written records. So we, we know history from written records. Before written records, no. But you have 250,000 years to go of your own family, direct family, and imagine you get to the point, you know, your family 250,000 years ago. And when I mean your family, I mean your family because they are the parents of 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 your parents. So think about your family 250,000 years ago when probably the language that your family spoke was very very little it would have some sort of language but you know could be <coughs> <coughs> meant go away <laughs> <laughs> and think about you know you you are a child there you know our family could be a child like you were there but your family your parents never told you about the moon you know, you look at the moon, you can see the moon in the same way you are looking at the moon today, but today when you look at the moon, you say, ah, the moon, yeah, you know exactly what you are looking. But think about when that family of yours was looking at the moon and was wondering about the moon. What is that? You know, and the, the parents <laughs> never even told them because they were too busy in escaping from wolves or whatever <laughs> they could be, you know? So think about, you know, that you are there, imagine it was you, and you are there looking at the moon with a very limited language, and you start observing the moon, and you observe that it grows, and it comes little, and it grows, and one day you decide to put, you know, like in your cave, you put, oh, one, two, how much days, and you find out that every 29 days it becomes big, so then you tell that to your children. Oh, the moon, the goddess moon, because you would, you would probably right, yes, interpret right. it as an energy there and you know nothing about it, you are just, uh, you are finding out. So, you know, think about how all this information through experience has been transferred from parents to children, from parents to children, from parents to children, to children till it arrives to you. One way to visualize this very easy is to imagine that you do <coughs> uh, an abbey, an abbey, exact abbey, because you know if you go, your you have fifty percent of your mother, fifty percent of your mother in genes, so we can make an abbey out of your father and mother. You are an example. But, you know, if, you go, if we go to your grandparents, you will have 25% of this, 30% of this, 15% of this, 12%. So you can make another average grandfather, which is an abbey. But, so imagine that you, every four generations, for you to visualize, every four generations means like uh, your family in the 1868 would be four generations, more or less. Four generations is like a century, or a century and a little bit more. So every four generations, imagine you do an average, an average abbey, which means <coughs> that you build a body with, you know, say this is your great-grandfather, so you have 16 of them. So you have... Uh, 2% of, a 5% of this one, a 3% of that one, a 7% of that one, that's regarding genes, no? So you make an abbey, same body, because it's the same genes, so you can find your genes there, so you do an abbey, and you put in abbey, you know, imagine that you have all the information, you put also in this average abbey, uh, 150 years ago, say, 
you put in this average AB, you know the 5% of the psychic characteristics that you have of that grandparent, because you know your great-grandparent. This is, for example, a way I explain it. How, inf how experiences become information. For example, imagine your family 1,000 years ago. That's 35 generations, more or less. So you have to pull the string 35 times. Most of you would be in Europe, right? Because there's no American Indian here. Well, you might have some family in, <laughs> in, in the, between the Incas and the Mayas or something like that. <laughs> but most of you will be probably in Europe. So you would be in Europe, and uh, in the year 1000 in Europe, I mean, that was a terrible place to be. <laughs> so imagine you were living there, and when I say you, imagine it was you, because we are doing an average chubby, no? So imagine it was you, you are a little boy, and you are in, in, in this hut where you live with your parents, that you know they are, they are farming, they are farmers, and you know these Vikings or these people that raided the towns, you know, come one day, raid the town, uh, enter the house where you are there, you are seven years old, you are watching all these things, they kill your father, they rape your mother and kill her afterwards, and they take you as a prisoner because they, they look at you, they see you are strong, and they say, look, he's a child, we can grow him and he will be of good help for the thing. So they pick you up, you have that experience, which leaves, which leaves you a very strong impression in the mind. Mm -hmm. You are taken away with these Vikings and you grow with the Vikings, you learn things with the Vikings, but when you are old, you manage to escape because this thing that they killed your father and your mother, which you laughed a lot, really, is there and you have not forgotten it. So you escape from these people, you go back to your people, you know, you go back to your place and you know you find this woman amongst uh, your tribe, your people, which was which is very much like your mother and this was very usual at those times because <coughs> tribes used to you know, Mary, you know, so they were very similar. You could know of what tribe you are by, the, by your looks. So you find this woman very much like your mother. It remembers your mother. You marry her. And because this impression, this experience generated a very strong impression in your mind, that impression is translated into a behavior and that behavior is translated into information and you teach your children, you have say seven children, and you teach your children in it is important to protect the mother always. The mother is very important. So you give that piece of information as a result of an experience. That piece of information is evolutively favorable because if you protect the mother, you protect the descendants, so it, it will go well. It's good information, so you transfer this to your children that adopt it, like we adopt the things that we have been taught by our parents, and then you teach that to your children, which they teach with little changes, that generation after generation, because you receive the pattern of your parents, then you confront that pattern with reality and if the pattern is good information it probably keeps but if the pattern is bad information it will drop i.e. when your, your, your family in the year 1000 was told that the earth was flat mm -hmm. but it was confronted at a certain moment a few generations after and discarded and then new information is being passed. So, say, this information, you have to protect the mother, so it is passed generation after generation, and you receive the same information, but in reality the information was generated in an experience a thousand years ago. 
that created a piece of information mm -hmm. that you are receiving today. So think about all the experiences that have been required so that you can have the information you have today. You know, generation after generation. Now another, this to the, the Eastern philosophy and you know, Guruji used to say, uh, and if you believe in reincarnation, so we don't explain reincarnation as something else you have to believe, but we explain evolution. And we explain evolution in a way that it is understandable. But in order to realize how much this has to do with you, <coughs> what you can do to understand also what is the meaning of reincarnation, what you can do is with your imagination, imagine yourself as your average great grandparent, where, where you put your body, exactly the same, but with the understanding, with the information, with the, the tendencies, with the mind patterns, with the models, that is an average of your great-grandparents and that you have inherited that information. You follow me, what I'm trying to say? So imagine that you are there with that view and do that every, every four generations so you will get, you know, abyss all the way to, you know, this very first primitive man or woman uh, that he is one of these first men. Your cousin, in fact, was Neanderthalis. Did you know that? <laughs> Which means that at a certain point you transit from one species to another, but it's a continuous thing. So because but there are always parents, so if you keep pulling, you will arrive to the ape, if you keep pulling, you will arrive to a rat of some description, if you keep pulling, you will arrive to a reptile, if you keep pulling, you will arrive to a fish, if you keep pulling, you will, you will arrive to a cell, but those cells, nobody kind of planted them, like if you were sowing a field. Those cells come from some bacteria, that at the same time come from some organic molecules, that at the same time come from atoms and those atoms were created in the stars and the stars is, uh, so you go all the way back to the Big Bang mm -hmm. so what you can easily say is you are the result of 13.7 to the 10 to the 9th potents of years of evolution since the Big Bang and you are <coughs> becoming conscious of all this process but you are part the result of the process so you are the representation of consciousness in fact you are the representation of God the best representation of God is another human being in this planet mm -hmm. there are other planets Excuse me. I'm going good so okay <coughs> so, you picture this in your mind? Mm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, imagine uh, it, to understand the incarnation. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. 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 So much more? Yeah. Sorry, guys, for doing this. Don't worry. This was my 13th. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you never know. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Adios. 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 Bye bye, sir. Bye bye, sir. So think about, you know, like, you know, go to this primitive life and imagine if it was yourself. Mm -hmm. And imagine yourself, you know, with that first information and then living the experiences of life and then you get more information 
and then you live another experience of life and you get more information and you get another experience of life and you get more information and so on and so forth. So you can see how it's a learning process. Evolution is a learning process. And the mind is all the information that have been created through all the experiences that you have had previously. Not only you, but the whole universe, because the, there is the concept of the universal mind, which is another concept that Guruji taught and that we teach. Now, Brahman, did, yeah. there's some, I don't know if Guruj um, felt this way, but there's some sages, I would say, who say that you choose your parents, that yeah, right. soul yeah. and that you. The Guruji said the same, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. So, but then how does that play in? Well, I mean, so what you just said. Do you don't you. This is just for you to understand what evolution is. Oh, okay. You know when. Look, this is something that you have to take into consideration, which is when we describe reality, we are just using the mind to um, communicate things that are not necessarily true in the sense that it's just a way to communicate, okay. for example. If, you know, your parents, your family in the year 2000 had a concept of this world <coughs> that they were living in. They were living in a world where, where there was a flat earth that would, you know, was sending, you know, in the water like big falls in the right and in the left, there was a thing like that which were all the stars and there was this man with beard uh, controlling it all. Mm -hmm. And you had that concept mm -hmm. like everybody and that was the concept of what reality is that you had then, mm -hmm. 1000 years ago. Now we have another completely different concept mm -hmm. and we speak about evolution and things like that. Wait 1,000 years mm -hmm. and see what they think about mm -hmm. what we think today about reality. Mm -hmm. You know, it will be another piece of bullshit. <laughs> but it's the, it's the bullshit that we use today. So, it's not that it is the truth, it is what we use to communicate. It's the amount of information that we have up to now. Mm -hmm. Understood this? Yeah. Okay, so with the amount of information that we have today, we can say that this is true with respect, relative truth with respect of the information today the world manages, you know, and, and, is, and deals with. So is that a reality or is that our actuality? No, the actuality is the day you have to live. That's even that's the simple that's the okay. simple part. Right. This is just to understand why is it that you are here? Why is it that you are confronted to the experiences you have to have? why you are born here and another person is born in Aleppo in Syria and another person is born here <coughs> why is that happening many people ask themselves I mean why right. some people mm. are born with a silver spoon in their mouth mm. and other people are born and they are kicked in the ass as they are born <laughs> so you know that is to understand what evolution is all about and, you know, if you, if you visualize this and you are able to transmit this, obviously you are here because you've been learning all these experiences before. If you had other kinds of experiences here, you would have ended up in a different place. Right. Yeah. Because it would be another line of evolution. And that's why, you know, if you are born in Aleppo, your parents were from whatever and transmitted you this information and their parents uh, had this idea and transmitted this, this information and maybe that information is wrong and then when an information that you are transmitted is wrong, reality, you know, goes against you because you think that that information is right but it's wrong, and reality ends up destroying it in this generation or in a few generations to come, which is the same thing as saying in this lifetime or in a few lifetimes to come, but eventually the information is bad, it will have to be discarded. So, 
People also, when they speak about reincarnation, they do a basic mistake, mm -hmm. which is, they say, <coughs> I was, in my previous lifetime, normally people will tell you, I was from Mary Magdalene to the soldier that helped Jesus with the cross, to a king, to... Very few people will tell you, I was a pedophile in my last <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, I hero. was yeah, something uh, important. Uh, you so will never he, see anybody yeah, telling you that he was something unimportant no, or no, even no. criminal. Uh, <laughs> so, but the problem is, what do you mean I? Because when people say I, and they refer to the one in this lifetime. I was, you know, the the soldier that helped Jesus with the cross. No, say that here you, your average here is the soldier that helped Jesus with the cross, and the average here is a Sumerian pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> And here is a cannibal, you know, in some place in Africa. And of course here we have an ape, and here we have a sort of rat, and here we have a, whatever, a reptile of some description, a fish. And here we have a cell, an eukaryotic cell. So, I was the soldier that helped Jesus with the cross. But then this Marian pedophile can perfectly say, no, 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 the I is me. I, this Marian pedophile, have become the soldier that helped. Mm -hmm. And then you, but the I is the Sumerian pedophile. But then the African cannibal says, no, no, no. <laughs> it's I, the African cannibal, that became a Sumerian pedophile, that became a soldier. Mm -hmm. And then the ape says, you are all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so who is the I that is incarnating? This is the impersonal word. Hmm. Uh, scientists call it the Big Bang ah. and represent the impersonal God with a formula which is the relationship between energy, mass and speed of light. Uh, Hindu philosophy uh, says that all this came about by the interrelationship of the three gunas. Have you heard about the three yeah. gunas? Mm -hmm. Sattvas, Rajas and Tamas. Well, look. Sattvas. Light. Uh, wisdom. Tamas. Darkness. Inertia, Rajas, action, which is the result of the interaction between darkness and light. You know this, no? You know, you yeah. haven't heard, ha <laughs> never heard about the three gunas? Yeah, I've heard the three gunas. Well, those are the three gunas, Sattvas, Tamas and Rajas, and it's of Indian cosmology, and you know, it says everything that has come about, has come about through the interaction, the impersonal God expresses or manifests itself through the interaction of sattvas, tamas and rajas. Sattvas is light, tamas is darkness or inertia, sattvas is light or wisdom, and the interaction between light and darkness creates movement, action, which is rajas. E, energy, movement, action, equals M, 
darkness, inertia, mass. And C squared is the speed of light. Light interacted with darkness produces movement. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. One is the Hindu more poetical and this other is more scientific, but it's the impersonal God. There is no will. Is it understood? Yeah. yeah. Marcia? I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't have to apologize. <laughs> it, 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 it's clear, yeah? Okay. Because this is what, you know, you want to transmit these concepts to the people. All right. So, because this is a way to get them near, you, you need to bring the concept of God to them in a way that they can accept them. And, you know, nobody can deny this. Mm -hmm. Can you and if they deny it, it's because they say it finishes in Adam and Eve, and then we, you are with a fundamentalist evangelical, and, and then you, there is nothing you need to explain him, because he has already his cosmology in his brain. <laughs> Sorry, can you just repeat the E, M, C squared, how that goes with the... Do you know this, you know this formula? Yeah. This is the Einstein formula. Einstein. No, I mean, M, M is mass. No, I mean, how it goes with the goodness. Well, think about it. C squared is the speed of light to the square. What would be that? Sarvas, which is light, right. tamas, which is darkness, or rajas, which is action. So we saw that. It would be sarvas, right. So, sarvas is this, no? Sarvas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. M, mass, Dark. you know, is darkness. darkness. You know, you can see the light. You can see the moon because of the light of the sun. The moon doesn't emit light. It's dark. Uh, and mass has inertia. So what's M? Mass, tamas, and energy. What's energy? <laughs> Action. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you eat a big meal, right? And you're on the couch going, uh, which one's that? <laughs> so... So basically you are trying to explain, this is the impersonal God. So look, the impersonal God is becoming a personal God through the process of evolution. Because, you know, this, this the impersonal God, the Hindus call it Brahma. The Christian and the Jewish call it the Father. The scientists call it the Big Bang. Mm. Now, what is this? This is the same as this, because this is what is incarnating, but with more information. The consciousness, pure consciousness is the same. But it has had all these experiences that make him, make him able to know itself. Because who knows the Big Bang? I mean, the Big Bang doesn't know itself. Right. It needs you to know itself. Mm -hmm. So nature creates you so that you, that are a result of the Big Bang, know the Big Bang. Right. That's why in Christianity it is said, no one knows the Father but through the Son. Right. Because this is mm. the Son. Without the Son, you cannot know the Father. You need the Son to know the Father. Pick the idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's an equation that Guru Raj used, which is man minus mind equals God. Exactly. Man, the son, minus mind equals God. God plus mind equals man. Because this is mind. Mind, from the Big Bang, you know, the first experience was between quarks, then hydrogen atoms between hydrogen atoms. Then uh, every time there is an experience, there is more information. The molecule gets more sophisticated. And each molecule has more information. And that information, and that is the mind. 
It's understood? Right, so. Question though, one question. So with respect to reincarnation, with the concept that there's, like you were using the various figures in time and they were, you know, a pedophile or they were, you know, mm -hmm. the guy that Christ or whatever. If I go to an astrologer and I do a past life regression, right, just, just, just to bring it up as a concept, and they say, well, in your past life, one of your past lives, you were a little black boy in Africa, and the one before that, you were a woman who committed suicide because her husband beat her. And then, right. You know, yeah. I mean, are those, it's not one entity, is, it, is the subtle body moving through those? No, lines? no, that's, yes. that's, that's misinterpretation. Misinterpretation. Completely, so so completely we'll erase that. Misinterpretation. <laughs> you can erase that. Yeah, yes. you, you don't need to lose your time yes. uh, for anybody to tell you your reincarnations because people, when they want to find like my reincarnations, they think about the little eye. The little yeah. eye dies. The, so it's the little eye dies, goes to the hole and disappears. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So be sure about that. The little eye is finished. The little eye is just a vehicle of an experience. It, it's like a, the, the suit you are wearing, that when mm -hmm. it's wore, wore off, you throw it away, but you are still there. Right. And the, the dress is never there, neither it was important to begin with. Yeah. And it never was alive. Now there's another tape though, where Guru Raj is talking about three different components, which is given as a concept of a body, a subtle body, and what I'm going to call pure... Well, words. yeah, exactly. Well, that is, yeah, that is... But that the, but that the subtle that, body that can have is, more than one lifetime. That is what I would, uh, uh, yeah, but that that is what I will leave for the next explanation, which is the mind. Okay. How the mind I works. I won't bring it but up. now we are just, you know, trying to understand evolution and trying to see that, you know, for example, for you to have another way to look at it. This is for you to use your imagination, okay, and imagine things. Imagine that this is the level of consciousness in this axis, okay? And this is time. You know, as I studied physics, I tend to be a little bit mathematical. <laughs> Now, imagine evolution. So you start like this, you know, little by little, and throughout time, throughout time, throughout time, you have every time more level of consciousness. So say we are here. Say that this time, 3.7 times 10 to the 9, since the Big Bang is this point, okay? And imagine that we can say that in this time today, the human mind has reached this level of consciousness. You have to realize that level of consciousness means that you start understanding things and then you have creative powers over those things. For example, if you understand how the uh, uh, Maxwell uh, electromagnetic field equations, if you understand that, you can do a telephone, and you can do a television, and you can do... So once you understand how the forces of nature work, you acquire a creative power over those energies. You understand that? Mm -hmm. Right. Now, if time, so if this was an equation and if you were in school and they gave you, because the equation is very much like this, you know, a cell has a consciousness which is here and you know the fish here, because the, fi the fish, you know, in the same way that we are aware of a universe, the fish is aware of a fish universe mm -hmm. or a dog is aware of a dog universe, you know, if, any of you have dogs? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you dogs are like persons. They are aware of you. They are aware of where they live. They are aware if it is raining or not. So they have an awareness of the universe, a dog awareness. But you, so imagine yourself 
how this awareness, you know, generation after generation, expands, 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 so you get more information, more information, more information, lifetime after <coughs> lifetime. So, if you have an equation like this, and you are here, and I will tell you, if t tends to infinite, where does level of consciousness go? Mm -hmm. So infinite, mm -hmm. exactly. So, means that there will be a time that the incarnated consciousness is aware of everything and has creative power over everything. Well, that's the personal God. Now, general theory of relativity complicates this more <laughs> because in reality all time is there. <laughs> so you don't need to reach there, it's already there. Mm -hmm. Time is something that expands and contracts and in reality we live in a space-time which means all time is there. Mm -hmm. If you go to the center of the universe, you go back in time. If you go outward the universe, you go forward mm -hmm. in time. So all the time is there. So the personal God is already there. And that is the concept of Ishvara or the Christ. Mm -hmm. And these are philosophical concepts. And you explain these to your students as what they are. Philosophical concepts and you relate them to the scientific knowledge today so that they understand that one is a poetical description in compared to a mathematical description but the language of spirituality is poetry not mathematics if I want to transmit to you the a sunset you know, I will not be able to transmit it to you explaining you the, the equation of the diffraction of light. Mm -hmm. But I can transmit you the sunset with a poem. So, uh, the spiritual or mystical language is poetry. In fact, most of the spiritual books are written in poetry. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, this is only poetical expressions which are more palatable to the heart than the mathematical expressions but they don't contradict the mathematics mm -hmm. they don't contradict the scientific knowledge they are not and you don't need to contradict scientific knowledge so you can have atheist scientific people that when I have them as I studied physics and with very good records <laughs> You know, I simply, you know, go, go to the equation and explain them in mathematics. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, no, I was just wondering if you can comment on collective consciousness. Yeah, we'll go in a second there with the mind. Okay, that that's is, part of the mind. That's part of the mind. Because we will, you know, we will, you understand this. Right. Yeah. So you picture, there is this impersonal God that a sun star expresses itself in its expression creates many individual particles that all of them are God that start having experiences, 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 experiences year after year, life after life, life after life and you know it's a kind of a, an unfoldment yeah. and we are here today to live just one day of all that. <laughs> That's the beauty of it also. Uh, so, so this is, you know, why you are here. Now, the next point to understand is precisely what does it mean, the collective unconscious? Well, what is the collective? I'm going to start with the collective unconscious, what they call, well, the word is subconscious. Can I just because there is nothing unconscious, it's only below consciousness. Mm -hmm. 
So below the consciousness of the little eye. Tell me. You ask me. Oh, um, I just want. The impersonal God expresses itself um, into many pieces and evolves into the impersonal. You just imagine. You just imagine uh, what is the Big Bang. Look. I know. I, will, I get. But I will start this one out with a video. Does it lead to the personal God? Is that what you're saying? Well, I mean, you are the personal God. Okay, that's what I wanted. I just wanted to verify that. The personal God, the best representation of the personal God in this is, planet okay. is any human being. I just want, yeah, that's all I want. But to the totality of the mind of the personal God is there because really, you know, time, although we perceive time as something implacable, a second after the other, in reality, time, is, no, it, it stretches and and it's small and it, it's, we live in a space-time, <clears throat> you know, a, a way to understand this, for example, is imagine you have a cube, which is a 3D, 3D, imagine you have a cube, which is a 3D space, and imagine you have a, a plane, which is a 2D space, Imagine that you are a being that lives in a 2D space, like we. We live in a 3D space, no? So imagine you live here, but this is moving. This plane is moving. So imagine this plane is moving, and then it, it, it you know, it pinches this cube at, a, at this moment, and then continues moving and goes out in this point. So you, that are living here, will perceive. Oh, a point has been born, and then it has grown, it has grown, and it has grown, and then it started to decay, decay, and it disappeared, and he died. So if you describe this phenomena, you will say, this was born, it grew, and it died. But nothing was born, neither grew, neither died. You simply, uh, you know, went a 2D plane, went through a 3D form. You follow that? Well, 3D with respect to time is the same thing. Time is, is, is the other, uh, another dimension. It's difficult if you only perceive in 3D to imagine a fourth dimension. I mean, for these people it's very difficult to think about this. They don't have the tools. But, you know, uh, the phys phys physics today, no know that this is a four, four dimension, it's a space-time, you know, if, if without considering this a space-time of four dimensions, the mathematics don't, don't work. The GPSs would not work if you don't consider all these things. So, uh, what happens is that a 3D moves through the fourth dimension, which is time, and then you, you say, oh, I was born. Oh, I got old and died, but in reality nothing happened. It looks like it happened. <laughs> <Feel>? <laughs> but that is too advanced. Let us leave it. No, the, uh, going back to the subconscious, which is easier to understand. Uh, if you consider this as, you know, information and how you, you put information, uh, another way to represent the mind, probably you have heard this way, but this also comes from Guru Raj, is, you know, an inverted cone, where this would be the superconscious, which is pure consciousness, which in reality represents the Big Bang. There is no information, only pure consciousness. Then you start accumulating information, and accumulating information, till you come here, where you have just below this, the surface, would be the conscious mind, conscious thoughts. So, conscious mind is what you are conscious of. You know, the thoughts that you are conscious of, which is just 
the surface of the mind. Mm -hmm. It's like this was a sea, no? Mm -hmm. Here, in the superficial subconscious, you have what we could call structures or current. These structures have been created through the process of education. And these currents are the ones that produce the waves which are the conscious thoughts. So this is the superficial consciousness. Below the superficial subconsciousness, there is the deep subconscious. This represents information that is individual to you is things you have to sort out. I mean, it's information that has not been sorted out, but it's not being at play in the right moment, in this lifetime. In Sanskrit, they call the seeds of karma, of future karma. So it's unexpressed karma, but it only belongs to you. And then the rest is what Jung called the collective consciousness. Now, this is very easy to understand with the string mm -hmm. because, you know, this string is just how you transfer information to the next generation, right? Mm -hmm. So tell me, how many family you had in year 1000, 32 generations ago? You, you never studied mathematics at school? No. <laughs> <laughs> How many parents you have? Two. 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 And grandparents? Four. Four. And great-grandparents? Eight. 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 So, Six, you have eight, two to the one parents, two to the two <laughs> grandparents, two to the three. <laughs> so, two to the 32 family members 32 generations ago. Okay, this number is, if you calculate it, it's around 16,000 million. So you have 16,000 million family members 1,000 years ago. Now, the question is, 1,000 years ago in this planet Earth, according to historians, there were only 700 million people living. Where are the family members that you are missing? <laughs> <laughs> Them, what happens is that very, very quickly we have all the, the same family. Yeah. Yeah. So very, very quickly we are family of Julius Caesar. Uh, so for that respect, when people say I was Julius Caesar, it's true because you have genes of Julius Caesar. You know, because Julius Caesar had, you know, children not only from her wife but from other people and this and the other which had that done. You know, and once you Imagine 2 to the 64, which be your family members in the time of Julius Caesar, like in the, that's a number that if you put it in your computers, you, you know you get overflow because it's too big to represent. Mm -hmm. Unless you have a 64-bit computer or something like that, you really, <laughs> need, you really need a lot of bits to represent such a big number. So, and that is in year one. Eh? Imagine if you go to year 250,000 ago, which is two to the, you name it, and they, they were only uh, a few thousand human beings in this planet. Mm -hmm. What happens is that it's, all of them are your family. Mm -hmm. So, from a given moment, we all have the same information, because we all have the same family. Mm -hmm. And the big part of the mind is the collective subconscious mind, what Jung called the collective subconscious mind, which is common information to all of us, because we all share it. So and the superconscious level of the mind is the pure consciousness from which all this process originated. So it's interesting, so when we say we're all one, 
scientifically, we all are one. So it's the same thing. Exactly, you know. Like I the mean, same thing you were saying spiritually. It says yeah. we are all one, but it's mathematical. We are. Well, we are all one because yeah. you know, if you look to this a little bit more deeper, you will find out the following thing. In order for you to be here, that you've done all this path, the lettuce has done the same path. The fig tree, oh, the tree. Yeah. has done the same path. Right, right. The cow right. has done the same path. Because if you go to the parents of the cow, you will have the parents of that cow, and if you keep pulling, mm -hmm. you will do the same path. Mm -hmm. But without that cow doing that path and this lettuce doing that path, you would not be here. Mm. So it is one thing happening at the same time, mm. of which we are all part, interdepending with each other. So now what about atrocities in the world, you know, and then collective consciousness, or, you know, just Think, Look, yeah, but atrocities, you know, it's like when people say, what about death? Uh, look, it's I'll show you. Well, no, I'm talking about collective with the country or people. Yeah, yeah, well, well, I, I, yeah. I, will, I will show you a poem of Guru Raj that explains this well, very well. <coughs> okay. I mean, I'm just curious about the explanation. What is this type of thing? Mm -hmm. uh, ah, I don't have this on. But it's, it's a good moment to put this point. So, you know, to begin with, I mean, disasters are not disasters. You know, imagine you were a, a reptile. Your family was a reptile. And you know, for your family, the fact that this, according to the scientists, meteorite or whatever, you know, falling in the earth and uh, the temperatures went up and everything was fucked up and it was terrible for your family <laughs> then. But without that you would not be here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, the terrible things are not terrible in reality. Terrible is the interpretation we do of things. We can interpret mm -hmm. things that like this is terrible, but this is only experience. Remember, you are not the little eye. Right. Mm -hmm. You are the experiencer, you are that pure consciousness just learning of itself and having experiences and having fun in reality. The God have, has fun with the tsunamis and says, come on, let's go have a tsunami for you. <laughs> for him it's only fun because death does not exist. The right. in. Yeah. So, you know Guruji, said in this poem, Oh my Lord, why do your people ask me to fathom the mysteries of death? What must I say to them? I that know of no life nor death. What must I tell them? Your scriptures talk of bubbles forming and bursting. But what can I say to them whose breasts, breasts heave to suckle a babe a husband's going not to come back, mm -hmm. a woman's agonizing pain, a father losing his son. Lord, what, what must I say to give hope? Death comes, death goes, death is but life. Mm -hmm. How do I explain to them life is but death? I am your son, see you not your son weeping. I can only surrender to your keeping I take them to the seashore and point, to the waves rising and subsiding. Try, they do not understand. Mm -hmm. So, you know, right. 
this is just an experience and if you little by little identify more and more with the experiencer then the experience we were speaking about pain and suffering you might be in pain but you are enjoying the pain you are not suffering because it's, you know pain is just an experience and you are experiencing that pain and you are enjoying the experience and you know it's like watching a film you know people think oh i want to watch films that everything is going well all the time <laughs> but th those, th 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 those would be very boring right. so you might uh, be watching a film that makes you cry but there is something there that knows that you are not what is happening so you might be crying but there is something there that knows that it's not you in any case right. and that yeah, knowledge is there like it is when you are watching a film mm -hmm. that you can enjoy to the full but not be affected by it mm -hmm. you become the observer and then the mind does not affect you mm -hmm. so this was the point of so what is the time now <laughs> I, I, we've, I've been speaking for an hour and a half. Time for coffee? Yeah. I think so. No. <laughs> I can see in your faces that you are tired of information. <laughs> no, no, it's the oh, physics. Great. It's the physics. I have, no, I, it came to be I have a question. Yeah, tell okay. me. I have a hard enough time teaching people how to focus on their breath. If I go through that, I will totally lose them. <laughs> so well, I mean, you don't how? need you 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 need to find your own way to transmit the ideas. Right. You don't need to transmit it as I do it. This I am doing it for you to understand. Mm -hmm. All right. So then so once you understand it, you want to help. Remember, the aim is uh, responsibility acceptance and you know this is part of what you are helping people to accept why they were born to those parents well we are forms of life in evolution and evolution means a path of learning right. and this right. you can explain you know with this thing very easy you don't need to get too complicated I studied physics and I might, might get a little bit more complicated but Oh, you know, <laughs> no, but this is just this is just you. for you to understand. Do you understand what I am saying? Yes. Yes. Good. Sorry. So if you understand it, then you will be able, in your own words and in your own ways and forms, explain why you sh should accept your life as it is, because we are, you know, doing that you should be able to explain what do people mean when they speak about the impersonal God and the personal God. You will have your own way to explain it. But the impersonal God is something natural that happens and the personal God is the result of that impersonal happening because it becomes personal through evolution. And the personal God is the one that knows the impersonal God. The impersonal God cannot know himself because to know something you need the person, you need the I. The I is the knower. And you get this in, you know, you all these non-dual teachers out there, most of them totally confused, try to explain this and they explain it much worse than what they do. <laughs> and they confuse people much more. Because this is just a matter of having that understanding so that you understand where we are but it's more to help the mind to say okay so let's live life you are just helping people to accept here the aim i mean when you are explaining all these things you are explaining you are going to speak about god so you want to give some sort of concept of god consciousness mm -hmm. because we teach about god Mm -hmm. uh, so you know you can't escape to speak about God but if you speak about God then you will have to use 
words and language that an atheist can accept, a Buddhist can accept, a Christian can accept. This is part of the essence of Guruji's teachings. His language can be accepted <coughs> equally by a Christian, a Jew, a Buddhist. And this is part of what you have to do. He's speaking a language that is accepted universally, but speak about God. And then what are you going to say about God? That he's a man with beard, a thousand and two hundred five kilometers above your head. So you have to give some knowledge about it. You know, so that people feel comfortable when you are going to tell them. And now you speak with God in the morning. Try to do it. Got you. you got that? Yeah, I got it. I got it. More questions. Oh, no. yeah, it's also just even the knowledge of saying, you know, it's saying the same thing, whether it's science or spirituality. Mm -hmm. Just as you said, one's more pi pi poetic, poetic, poetic. the other is yeah. more mathematical. It's really the same way in different ways of looking at it, but it's the same truth. Yep. Yeah. It's just what one is more intuitive in teaching, the other one is unlike well, you. The mathematics, <laughs> are scientists. the mathematics deal with the objective world. No, so, I know, but for us... So with mathematics, you deal with the objective world. With poetry, you deal with the subjective world. And spirituality is the subjective reality. We really don't know what is the objective reality. We have, you know, we think, we know, like, like our family thought they knew 1,000 years ago that the, the, the earth was flat. And we think we know that the universe is how we describe it today. today. Wait 1,000 years, right, I tell right, you, right, because right, yeah. it's not how we describe it. Mostly so mathematics deal with <laughs> objective reality. And mathematics is a tool that allows you to understand and control and predict how objective reality is going to behave. Mm. And as long as you can predict, you know, the speed of this thing falling down and you can predict it always, mathematics is good and it deals with objective reality. Poetry deals with subjective reality, which is another thing is your reality as perceived by the subject, by the I. And spirituality has to do with that subjective reality and the language of spirituality is poetry. It, mm -hmm. You get through, you don't need to speak in poetry, but it is a poetical, that's why we use metaphors. God is a metaphor. Mm -hmm. You know, what you, you know, you can, would you be able, imagine it was an absolute truth. You know, E equal MC squared. Would you be able to devote to E equal MC squared? No. You need to devote to something you can relate with, and that's poetry. So you make E equal MC squared into a god, and you put him a face and, and qualities and this and that and the other, because your experiences of your divine, which is consciousness, is a personal experience. So you can only devote yourself to a personal God. Because the only experience you have about consciousness is personal. Mm -hmm. So you can only relate with pure consciousness to begin with through the personal. Through a personal, because the other is too abstract. I mean, equal mm -hmm. Imagine doing Guru Shakti with E equal MC <laughs> 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 Well, some people might relate to that easier. Nah. No? Okay. That doesn't, you know, that is not poetry. I mean, if you are a mathematician, yeah. and then you can perceive the poetry of mathematics, which there is also, then yes. But most of the people don't like mathematics. So <laughs> well, that's what my point is, is that for those of us who are subjective, okay, this math, this objective way of teaching is, like for me, is, is No, but you know here... You don't need to go you know, to the specifics. Just you just need to... You just need to... 
pass the following information. You are a product of evolution. You are a product of this impersonal God, call it the Big Bang, call it the impersonal God, call it this vibration, on, call it whatever you want to call it. Look, I explain this to people, like I'm doing in the course I'm giving, and I explain all these things, and they never have any problem. Yeah, no, it's wonderful. So, you know, and I've taught all my teachers to explain these things and they all do it in their own particular ways, mm -hmm. right. but they manage to transmit the essence, which is, look, you are part of this long story right. Right. Uh, that started with the Big Bang, and you are the product of that Big Bang, and you are the knower of the Big Bang, and you are a form of life in evolution and you are learning and you have been born here because your parents were born here and they passed you that information and you have to sort out what chunk of that information has to be sorted out already and the, the ones that are born in Syria they have to sort out other kinds of information mm -hmm. and it's not you know like like uh, like a, a diabolic lottery that you fall here or fall there mm -hmm. You know, it has, it has a, a why and a wherefore, so, in other words, he's explaining reincarnation, but in a language that even people that don't believe in reincarnation can accept and understand. So it's just finding, you know, the right language, and, you know, all my teachers, and they are, you are not worse or better than them, so, can do it so you can do it also and you don't need to use my words I use my words I probably go into more detail with you so that you understand the essence but then you know if you understand that then it's a matter of explaining it in your own words you find the way to explain it through your own experience because you know at the end of the day if you look at yourself, you will see how you have inherited all the patterns of your family and how those patterns had to confront reality and maybe some of those patterns were no good and you've had to discard them but others were good enough and you are keeping them and that's how evolution works. Isn't this basically the same as like, you know, with the samskaras? Well, the samskaras yeah. is information, yeah, right, I mean the samskaras are the information that has been created by previous impressions. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this is the same as samskaras. It's the same thing. It's the same thing but explained without putting... I use the minimum strange names I can. I know. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> I know. We, we were told to use the word impression instead of, of samskaras, yeah, so yeah. all those impressions or all those samskaras is yeah. information those impression is information, you know, it's information that you have you know, you have the impression that a red light is to stop that is information, you have the impression, you see a red light, you stop so that is information and that is, and that information that you have determines your behavior yeah. in this case you stop in front of a red light Without that information, probably you don't stop at <laughs> Okay, coffee time now. the end of the corridor. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. I was just thinking. Hmm? I wonder if he's doing more lecturing with the class because he's videotaping that. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I mean, even with the other plans, is what she was saying, it was just a thought, you know. That's a good thought. Somebody I mean, I don't know if the truth. Right? No. There's also one over yeah, here. Oh. oh, okay. That's a good. Um, I mean, uh, it was just a, a thought yeah. that I had that that could be also. Could be, but yeah. I mean, if I was listening to that, I would want to get knowledge from him versus bantering back and forth with, you know. Mm. Uh, that was a bit much. <laughs> I mean, it I came guess the, together, yeah. which was good. Yeah. It the was, bottom line is, I think it's a scientific explanation of what we. Right. We all feel that we are all one and part of right. the same, and that's a scientific way of saying that we really are. We are, and you know, they yeah. can say, you know, for those of you who are more science, <laughs> more science yeah, yeah. Google it. That's, yeah. that's how I would handle it. It's, 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 it will be there, you know. Right. That, that's true. That's true. If there's people that want right. more, that kind of was a lot. To yeah. digest. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna <laughs> sugarcoat it. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. That was a lot to digest. Yeah. I mean, and I'm like, well, okay. I, I'm trying to process it. As well, yeah, that's a lot. lot. So and that's it's, why. Well, it's an interesting. This, yeah, this, and this it's an really interesting thing because at one point I had to, you know, let. Go, you know, I, I consciously thought, okay, let me go and just listen because when there's so, too much and you're on overload, your brain kind of shuts yeah. off a bit. And I, I, I saw myself doing that and I consciously said, okay, let It's interesting because it was, as you said. It's observing yourself. Yeah, yeah, it was. I was the observer. Oh, he was my. losing. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit much. Okay. I think I have a little bit more left in I'm going to go some more. I literally. Mindfulness stuff. I, oh. I think it's very smart. Mindfulness. Science, the science yeah. is, is 